Hello and welcome to the Friday, December 8th, 2023 edition of the Sands and it Storms and it's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A couple of interesting diaries to talk about. The first one here just came in as I got ready to start recording here. Comes from Eijing Talk. He works with the Automated System Security Research Group Asset at Singapore University of Technology and Design. And they were looking into 5G implementation vulnerabilities. These vulnerabilities can be used for denial of service attacks. Certainly not the most interesting type of attacks when it comes to wireless uh, communication, but they can also be used to downgrade 5G connections to 4G connections, which of course then may open up the connection to additional vulnerabilities. In some cases, the 5G denial of service uh, issue would be persist in a sense that it would require a reboot in order to avoid it. These vulnerabilities are currently being addressed by various manufacturers. And now there is a list of different specific devices that are vulnerable. But keep in mind that it's typically like the chipset and uh, the software coming with it that's vulnerable here. And that, of course, is the same across a wide range of additional manufacturers. Be on the lookout for any updates here. Aside from that, there isn't really that much you can do. The vulnerabilities are mostly targeting 5G in standalone mode, which means that you're using 5G exclusively, sort of end-to-end. Most networks these days actually are still in the non-standalone mode, at least in the US, the standalone mode just sort of came online. I think AT&T started using it this spring. So you may still be using non-standalone mode. The reason you do use standalone mode is just because, well, you get all the benefits of 5G, like faster connection speed, slower latencies and the like. So that's why you may be tempted to use standalone mode. But in the end, just like the updates, this may be up to your carrier or device manufacturer. So just wait for the updates if they haven't already arrived. And then we also have yet another guest diary from one of our undercredited interns. Uh, This time it's a Pretty good summary of QR codes, how they work, and what some of the risks are. Personally, I always considered the risk a little bit overstated from QR codes, but it certainly exists. We have seen, for example, some attacks where fake traffic tickets or, for example, fake QR codes at certain payment stations and such have been abused uh, to direct uh, victims to the wrong URL. Of course, that could very easily just happen uh, with uh, some kind of uh, short code URL or so as well. Uh, one interesting advice here that I totally agree with is that you have to be a little bit careful with all the different scanner applications. Uh, pretty much all operating system Android, iOS uh, these days do have a built-in QR code scanner. So there isn't really a need to install any third-party software, which of course has its own risks and just increases your attack surface. There was also an interesting comment, uh, I think it came on Mastodon, about uh, whether or not these QR code libraries themselves, the scanning libraries, are vulnerable. I haven't really seen sort of a great sort of work around that, but wouldn't be surprised if uh, these libraries are vulnerable and you could actually trigger those vulnerabilities with specific malicious QR codes. And October 14th, 2025 may sound like it's quite a ways out, but this will be the end of support day for Windows 10. And Microsoft this week published some additional details about, well, uh, what comes with the end of support for Windows 10. Of course, they are suggesting the upgrade to Windows 11 as your primary path forward here, but uh, they are also offering then extended support beyond that October 2025 deadline. One interesting little tidbit here, this will also include a Windows 10 Home Edition. 
in prior Windows releases, uh, this was really more sort of focused on commercial customers and with that sort of the uh, pro editions of the operating system. Not sure exactly what it will cost, of course, uh, but uh, yes, even as a home user, you may have the option to pay for additional updates beyond the end of support. Let me have uh, one more vulnerability I want you to know about here before you head into the weekend, and that's CVE 2023-5164. It's an Apache Struts remote code execution vulnerability. Given the... Uh, exploits and such being written in the past for these type of vulnerabilities. That's something that should be on your radar. I don't expect you to patch it all on Friday because that's one of the big issues with struts. That's, well, it's one of those common components included in all kinds of other software. Well, that's it for today. Uh, thanks to those who checked out the classes that I'll be teaching. Remember, coming week, I'll be recording from Washington, D.C. And uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Talk to you again on Monday. Bye.